So I wanted to do a quick video about my thoughts about my decision to go with a direct drive motor over a geared hub motor. This was something that I debated quite a bit. I was wondering if I should go for this Bafang uh, G310, I think it's called. It's a very light, maybe four pound motor, puts out up to 500 watts, which honestly, knowing what I know now, is more than enough. Um, versus this super heavy Crystallite H3525, I think it's almost eight kilos, so 15, 16 pounds. It is super heavy, but I love it. I think this was the best decision in my conversion by far, and I'll give you a few reasons why. The first one, if you listen closely, hopefully, you can probably hear the wind rustling, but you can't hear the motor. This motor is silent, it's dead silent. And as I bike in this serene, beautiful mountain, I don't wanna hear a buzzing. I don't wanna hear a constant buzzing. And as I'm going up the hill, I'm constantly hearing the wind and my gears and the tire, but I'm not hearing my motor. And I, I believe it would drive me nuts. I hate, you know, a constant buzzing. Plus, you know, I could pass hand I could pa pass regular cyclists with this hub motor. And, you know, unless they pay true attention, they're gonna think they're getting their ass kicked by a motherfucking uh, hand cyclist, you know? So I definitely like the incognito aspect of, uh, of this silent direct drive hub motor. So that's the first thing I love about it. The second thing, and this has actually saved my life, is the regenerative braking. Um, maybe a little bit of an exaggeration with saving my life, but it made one trip that could have been really difficult and scary way, way safer and uh, more fun, I guess. Um, when I was going down Monitor Pass, my disc brake stopped working. Uh, this actually happened because my e-brake cutoff got disabled and when I thought I was doing regen, or maybe it's just, I don't know, I didn't adjust my brake properly, it, it actually um, stopped working, my disc brake. So I was, I don't know, 3,000 feet above Markleyville and I had 10 miles to go down, some pretty steep grades. I, 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 I went into my cycle analyst and uh, I set my top speed at 15 miles per hour and I was able to get down the mountain at a very comfortable pace. So the second big benefit of the direct drive motor is the fact that uh, you, you can have regenerative raking and it's incredibly useful when uh, you're, you're you know, road biking in the mountains. I was able actually to recover 20, 25% of the energy used. So while in city driving, you might be able to regen four to 8%, I'm getting 20% consistently. So it's significantly extending my range. And that's the third big benefit. Regen gives you extra range. I love it. I think this, this, this fact alone is going to be a key enabler to me doing something I've been dreaming since I realized was a possibility, and that is to do the death ride. The death ride is this famous race. It's 15,000 feet of vertical, 129 miles, five different peaks, and you bet your ass I'm doing it. Um, I'm gonna have to get a second battery, but Regen is gonna be able to extend my current battery to be able to do it. Without Regen, I don't think I'd be able to do a couple of the legs. Basically, like after every pass or every two passes, you go back to Markleville and uh, I can do one pass. I don't think I could do two. So regen uh, or the battery extension during, you know, biking in the hills of the direct drive motor is super useful. And finally, the, 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 the other big benefit and honestly, the, the, the key driving, the purchase driving decision that I had behind it was the direct drive motor is simple. It's robust. I don't anticipate any gears wearing out anytime soon because there are no gears. The direct drive motor has no gears. So while I don't have a data point for the geared motor, honestly, the weight has not been an issue at all. I bike into my garage. 
I reverse out of my garage. By the way, I have reverse on my e-bike, which is cool. Um, and I never notice the weight. I never pick up my bike. It's never an issue. And when I expect the bike from home, uh, or bike back home, once I go back to San Jose, I'm probably gonna be biking from home most of the time anyway. I might throw it in the car once in a while, but honestly, going through a little bit more pain of, of carrying this, this, this bigger motor, not a problem. As far as riding, this, I can't tell any difference whatsoever. I mean, I, I don't have a geared motor to, to compare it to, but um, uh, the weight hasn't been an issue at all. And in fact, I couldn't even imagine the weight being a positive because it puts more pressure on the front tire. And uh, in a hand cycle, especially as you go up a steeper incline, you're putting less and less weight on the front tire, which gives it less traction. So with a, a heavy motor, it actually has more traction. So the weight could actually be a benefit. So as far as uh, hand cycle conversion, I am a strong believer in the direct drive motor. So I would highly recommend that. And uh, the, the Crystallite, the one that I got, is just fine. Um, I think there are a couple other ones which were interesting. Uh, there was a TDCM, internal gear hub one. So if you don't have a derailleur or if you want something really, really bulletproof, imagine having a system that uh, doesn't have a derailleur, so that's not going to break, has an internal gear hub, which are also known to be a lot more uh, robust than the regular uh, outside cassettes, the, the external ones that we have. So uh, I, I am a, I, right now I'm a big proponent of the direct drive motor, and I think that was a, that was a very good decision. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's the direct drive versus uh, geared hub benefit. Oh, a couple of other things I guess I should mention. So as far as going uphill, not a problem whatsoever. Um, I had a concern that I'm not gonna have enough torque I'm able to start with this motor up any incline. There has not been a single incline where I have not been able to press the throttle and get off the line basically without pedaling. So um, maybe one benefit is the fact that I have 1200 watts that can go through this motor. Another benefit of this versus the G310, which can only handle 500 watts, but I could start off the line anywhere. Um, as far as climbing efficiency, I'm able to go up the pass and only use eight amp hours. I'm super happy. I could, I could go again, hit the death ride, um, uh, so as far as efficiency, I don't have, really have a good point to compare, but when I was looking at the motor simulator, I actually think this is more efficient, if not as efficient as the geared hub motor. So, so that, that's another, you know, potential benefit of geared hub is you get better torque. I have not had any torque issues whatsoever. I could start off the line and, uh, get going without any problems. And that actually has been another huge benefit of the, the e-bike conversion. Many times on my previous hand cycle, if I was not in the right gear, I would really have to strain hard to get off the line. And I've actually tweaked my shoulder doing that. I injured it because I had to put too much pressure. Now I just press the throttle and it's, it's super smooth, super smooth. So another big benefit of, of having this e-bike conversion is getting off the line. I just, I press the, right now I'm pressing the, the throttle and I didn't have to use any energy really to get back, back up and going. Um, so I think that the direct drive is, is really the ultimate solution for a hand cycle. It allows you to brake on the downhill. It has plenty of torque to get you off the line, no matter the situation. And I, I was on some pretty steep grades and I was still able to start. Um, it has regenerative braking. It is very efficient. It's silent and it, it, it has a massive thermal mass. So even if you're going up something insane, I went, I, I was going up monitor pass, which is a well known, that's one of the harder passes in the death ride, by the way. I never made it above 62 degrees in terms of the, the, the hub motor temperature, 62 degrees. So well below the thermal limit. I imagine the geared motor would have been baking over hundred degrees. Um, so yet another benefit of, of the direct drive motor. So yeah, um, I have to say I'm a very happy customer right now.